Okay, section 1.10, exploring types of discontinuities. Um, so this one is going to be mostly intuitive. Um, we haven't described, we haven't talked about what a discontinuity is or what it means for a function to be continuous. That's kind of what we're going to be getting at in the next couple sections. So um, in, in this section, I'm, I'm just going to kind of rely on you to have some sort of intuition for what you think a discontinuity might be. And it is kind of hopefully what you would intuit, which is it's some sort of a break in the graph. Okay. And we're just going to categorize these certain discontinuities. So in this graph, we can see we, we do have a couple breaks, right? There seems to be a break here where you have kind of a vertical asymptote. There's a hole here. Kind of jumps here there's another hole here so we see a few different discontinuities i'm just going to have you categorize those right now so let's start with your point or removable discontinuity so this is when you have a hole in your graph and it's either just a straight up hole or sometimes like in the second one it's a hole where the graph is then defined at a different point somewhere else um, but we call this either point discontinuity or removable discontinuity. And the reason it's called a point discontinuity or removable discontinuity is because it's very easy to um, remove it if we'd like to, right? So for this one, if I just got rid of that factor of x minus 2 and just were to graph y equals x plus 1, that would remove that hole in the graph. All right. Next, we have the jump discontinuity. And again, there's an intuition. This is called uh, the floor function. And you won't have to work with this too much. It's just a famous function and it has infinitely many jump discontinuities. The, the way the floor function works is you give it an input of any number and it truncates that number. So it just chops off the decimal part of that number. So if I were to input 1.1, it chops off the point 0.1 and gives me 1. So it's, it's sometimes referred to as the greatest integer function. It's the greatest integer less than or equal to the input, right? And if you give me 1.9 as the input, it still just outputs 1. But then when you give me 2 as the input, it outputs 2, which is why you see the jump at 2. So anything up to close to 2, it's going to output 1 until you get to 2, then it jumps to outputting 2, right? And so you, you get a jump discontinuity when the limit as x approaches a value from the left is not equal to the limit as x approaches that same value from the right. Whoops. That's what's going to produce that kind of a jump discontinuity. So you can see that as we approach 2 from the left, the left, my x's approach 1. As I approach 2 from the right, my x's approach 2. And thus, I get a jump discontinuity. And this function would have jump discontinuities at every integer. All right. An infinite discontinuity happens when we have a vertical asymptote of any type oops so a vertical asymptote will occur when you're approaching a limiting value from the left or the right and your function approaches positive or negative infinity, right? So any kind of a function that has a, a vertical asymptote at any point, that's called an infinite. Sometimes it's referred to also, I'll give you this one just so that you have all the vocab words. Sometimes it's called an essential discontinuity as well.
Okay, so this one's discontinuous at x equals zero because x equals zero is the vertical asymptote. All right, let's do a couple examples. Um, so they're just giving us a function and asking at what numbers is f discontinuous and why. So we can pretty clearly see it's discontinuous at x equals, oh, what happened? Um, one. So that's our first point, and I'm just gonna, the y is just gonna be the categorization. So this is just a point discontinuity. And then the next one we have is at x equals three, right? That's our jump discontinuity. And for that one, I'm going to go even further and say that the limit as x approaches 3 from the left looks to be, let's call that negative 1, whereas that's not equal to the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, which, I don't know, I'm going to make up a number here. Let's say that that's 2, something positive, right? Okay, and then we have one more discontinuity at x equals five. And again, that's another point discontinuity. Whoops. All right. So for this one, let f be the function defined by f of x equals x cubed minus 9x over x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 12. Find any discontinuities in the function and identify the type. Okay, so this particular problem, I can tell we might have some discontinuities because it's a rational function. So rational functions all often have uh, issues with their domain, right? It's not just the standard all real numbers because you may end up dividing by zero. That can oftentimes create a vertical asymptote or sometimes just a hole. Now, this one is possible to do by hand. It's a real big pain because the denominator doesn't factor well. So I'm gonna enlist the help of GeoGebra. You can use your graphing calculator. We're just gonna throw this in the calculator and take a look at its graph. So there I've put it in GeoGebra, and there's its graph. It does look like there seems to be an essential discontinuity here, and just eyeballing it, it looks like it's at negative two. I can verify that by using the table in my calculator, um, or in GeoGebra, it'll just let you input function values. So if I just wanna get really close to negative two and see what the Y values are doing, I could do like negative 2.1, f of negative 2.01. And sure enough, it just looks like my y values get infinitely large uh, negative as I get closer and closer to negative two on my input, on my input rather. Um, whoops, I think I hit positive 2.1 on that one. Let me just try that one more time. f of negative 2.001. There we go. Yeah, so we're just getting infinitely large. And in fact, GeoGebra is smart enough that it can kind of handle calculus. So if I put in negative 2, it'll just tell me that the output is infinite. So our answer here is that we have an essential discontinuity So we'll say essential or an infinite, if you would wish, discontinuity at 
at x equals negative 2. Um, all right, let's do one more. Find the location and type of discontinuity here. So we're going to have three discontinuities at x equals 1. We have a hole, so you can call that a removable discontinuity. At x equals 5, that's a jump discontinuity where the limits approach different things on either side of 5. And finally, at x equals 7, we have another hole, but it's defined above at x equals 7. So we'll call that a point discontinuity. Right, and that's it. So I got a student example for you. Go ahead and give this one a shot. It's multiple choice, but be able to justify your answer, and we'll go over this in class next time. Go ahead and pause it here, and I'll see you then.